understanding the methods that, that uh, are used to generate the recommendations for protein intake, I think it's important to at least understand that all of those methods have certain limitations and, and that really hanging our hat on one particular method is probably a big mistake and we need to, to kind of take into account uh, several different ways to, to, to look at this before we can come up with the, the, you know, the definitive answer. And as of now, we have a certain amount of information based on different methods such as nitrogen balance and, and, a, and amino acid oxidation measurements. And those come up with roughly the same type of recommendations when you look at that, if you look at the whole body of literature, not isolate on one, one study. And that's always the danger is people tend to want to look at one study and say, hey, that's how we're going to do it. I think that's a mistake. I think we need to look at sort of more of them. And then always understand that the recommendations are based on what we know now and not necessarily what is actually true if we knew everything. And so that we always need to be willing to learn and willing to accept new information and then, and then structure that. So, and then within that, what we need to do is the recommendations tend to come in a range. For example, now the current recommendation is around 1.6 to 2.2 grams protein per kilogram body weight per day. So within that, then each athlete and nutritionist need to work to try to find what works for that athlete at that time, depending on the requirements for their training adaptations and for their performance. And also probably within the context of a periodization across the, the competitive season and how they fit that into the rest of the diet, including the carbohydrate, fat, and other nutrient uh, demands.